Hey, good Sunday afternoon, everyone. This is the January 16th, 2022 ABTC pilot plant construction update. I took a few weeks there off uh, for the holidays, also caught COVID, so I uh, was getting over that, but I'm hoping to do more regular updates going forward here in 2022. Um, as always, I am not affiliated with ABTC, Miles Construction, I am just an investor trying to share some information about the construction progress to keep everyone updated and in the loop. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing we're looking at here is a drone photo, thanks to Myth for this, from a few weeks ago now. I have some more recent photos we'll take a look at, but this one does a good job of showing the tilt-up wall forms. So the tilt-up wall forms are going to be um, these wooden structures you see around the site here and basically they'll be the outline for the walls and with tilt up walls you pour your cement in on the ground in kind of the horizontal position you let it dry and then you tilt it up uh, into the vertical wall formation that you're used to seeing on a building so here you can actually see um, some of the doors, uh, this bigger outline is a roll-up door, so you'll see that there's another one right up over here. Uh, the smaller ones are just typical man doors. You'll see one there. There's going to be a few around so people can get in and out. Um, so the outline is the wall structure and then any outlines within it are cutouts uh, for either doors or vents or roll-up doors. And you may be asking yourself, you thought they were done pouring the main slab, but then you saw all these slabs around it show up. These are just temporary slabs. Uh, you need to be able to pour your tilt-up wall on a somewhat uh, flat surface, and that won't uh, hurt the concrete. So they, they pour these, uh, they're a couple inches thick, so they're not thick at all, but they pour, pour these temporary slabs that they can build the forms on, brace them down, and then um, used to kind of hold the forms together while they cure. So this is a more recent drone shot, thanks again to Myth for these, um, of the form work going on and you can see it's a little more developed now. So um, this was taken two days ago I believe on Saturday and here you can see a lot more of the structures built out so um, these boxes right here those are vents so those are vent cutouts uh, again big ones an overhead door and you can actually see the roof shape here so um, I'll pull up a few images here I'm gonna cover up part of this but um, you can see the production facility has an angle to it so that's what you're seeing in these angles here so um, just to orientate you, here's the production facility floor plan, and this room right here, that is the electrical room, and we know the electrical room is right here on the drone photos. So um, that can kind of line you up in your head of how we're facing here. So you can see the water treatment areas right here. This is water treatment. Uh, over here, this is the main production facility. So kind of lining some of these things we know up is this overhead door will likely be the overhead door shown right here. So if you go around and you count up the slabs, you're going to have more slabs than the exterior. And that's because some of these walls are interior. Um, so this wall right here, I anticipate actually going over here and becoming a wall inside the building like this. So that would correspond to this wall right here. Um, so that's what my current thought is. And then of course the ones that are sloped are going to be your exterior walls because they will um, be these right here. And you could kind of line it up. They still have some additional work to do like you got an overhead door here. There's your overhead door. You got another overhead door here. There's your other overhead door. Um, they likely will build another, a third one that we don't see yet somewhere in the formwork down here. Um, and then you can match the vents up too. So uh, we're going to look at the racking area. So the storage and racking area has a truck dock, so you're going to have a lot of overhead doors. That's what you see here. That's the 
kind of storage area where trucks will pull in with feedstock and and pull out with uh, black mass hopefully soon. So you can see the three overhead doors that lines up. Uh, you can see a big overhead door that lines up. And then above it you have all these vents or air intakes. Not quite sure. Some HVAC cut out there. Um, so that's kind of what it's looking like. Um, again, a lot of these interior ones that are poured on the main slab will actually be interior walls. Um, and then a lot of the walls poured around the outside will be exterior walls. All right, the next thing I want to just hit on in this video is what these guys are. So you still see them sticking out of the foundation, running down the middle, and then they kind of go off in a T shape. These are precast anchor bolts. So basically when they poured the foundation, they put these anchor bolts in with the cement and then they let it cure within the cement structure. So they're tied in with the, the structure below it. And basically what this is, is it kind of tells you where they're gonna put structural columns. So this is a photo, of course, not from the ABTC site. This is from one of my old job sites and this is much smaller scale. So it should be a lot larger than this, but it gives you a good idea anyways. Uh, you can see the anchor bolts here, they stick out and basically you just drop a column on it and then you adjust your uh, bolts below it and then you come back and you put grout around the base of it. So anytime you see these sticking out the foundation, if you were wondering what they were, this is basically what they're going to be used for. Um, structural columns should drop down um, in those areas and support either the roof or the mezzanine level. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about was some structural steel. So um, we see here in this photo, this was from a few weeks ago, that there's some steel on site. Now, um, there's some discussion about what this may be used for. Some of it's definitely going to be used for the tilt-up process, um, so bracing during that process and securing the walls together. But some of the steel may also be permanent steel. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see what it actually gets used for. Um, there should be some cleats in these uh, skids right here. And uh, with it being so close to the actual tilt-up area, I think most of it will get used for tilt-up bracing, uh, usually if this is going to be permanent steel, which actually is coming up here in the schedule pretty soon. Um, it would be further away in a lay-down area. So we'll keep an eye on that, but we do finally see some, some uh, steel on site, which is exciting. So what do we have left before we see the walls go up? Not too much, actually. So. The first thing is they got to finish up the tilt up wall form. So that's all the wooden forms you see laid out around site, including all the cutouts for doors and vents and, and any windows or openings in the wall. So that should be completed early this next week. And then they need to lay rebar down in all the form. So the wall needs some structural component to tie all the cement together and that's rebar. So each of these forms will get a grid of rebar throughout it and then they should be ready to pour. So that should come sometime late this upcoming week or into the weekend, hopefully, as long as the weather out in Fernley holds up. And then uh, you have to let it set for a few days um, to gain its actual structural component. And then once it's set, you can uh, remove the forms and then tilt up the wall. And that's an, actually a pretty quick process, I expect, the actual tilt-up process of the walls to only take two days, maybe three if it if it goes slow. But you really want to cut down on the the crane rental time. So um, the idea is to stand them all up at once. And this isn't too large of a building actually, so it should go fairly quick. All right, taking a look at uh, the Gantt chart. And schedule so um, the one update I did want to mention is I um, went from 20 days ahead of schedule to 15 and this is mainly due to they had some difficult weather out around the end of December early January in Fernley um, snow and and ice and all of that it wasn't fun working out there I'm sure so we're still 15 days ahead of schedule um, and I show that here on the Gantt chart so 
The blue line is today's date, the 16th, and then um, this other blue line out here is my estimated completion of the forming up and pouring the panels. So we're about 15 days delta there. Uh, the original schedule had them pouring uh, the forms in mid-February, which I still think will beat by a few weeks, so that matches up with our 15 days. And then the next activity is uh, tilting up the panels, which on here is only a few day activity. Like I said earlier, it should go fairly quick. And then it gets exciting because we get some structural steel on site. So that'll be our next longest activity is structural steel. That'll be installing the steel columns, the mezzanine structure steel, and um, all of the roofing uh, members to support the roof. Uh, it might get a little difficult um, for some drone shots once we get some of the structural steel and roofing in because obviously we can't see inside the building then but hopefully we'll have some good updates and by that point we're actually getting close to equipment showing up so I'm sure we'll be able to get some photos of the first equipment on site coming up in March or uh, April so that'll be very exciting to keep an eye out for that. My current estimate is we are about 38% complete on the production building phase one and then we're about 26 to 30% complete towards black mass production. So we're closing in on 100 days out for the production building. Uh, we're looking at a 5-4 date there and then a 7-24 date for black mass. And of course we may see black mass a little earlier depending on how quick the equipment gets put in place and commissioned. And these dates are very, very um, not firm. So you'll see these dates move around a lot as we get further down the construction schedule and I adjust them. Uh, but this is my current estimate. As always, if you want to see some more info or weekly updates, uh, please visit abtcstock.com. Um, you'll see this Gantt chart in there and some weekly updates as well. And uh, I have a little box to sign up for the weekly newsletter that I hope to send out every week going forward here. And if you have any questions, uh, you can send me an email at abdstock at gmail.com or find me in the Discord and direct message me or just tag me. And I'm usually pretty good at responding to that. So thanks everyone for watching and hope you have a good Sunday.